Hi everyone, welcome. I'm over here at my computer and I uh, just figured I'd start by showing what I'm going to do right now, which is uh, I'm going to head downstairs and I'm going to check in on my 145 day old worm bin, which um, as you can see here, four days ago it received what is referred to as a horizontal feeding, but that was really just a reinforcement to the original horizontal feeding, which occurred 11 days ago. So here are the H1 age as you can see is trying to indicate to me how how old of a horizontal um, migration I have so after 11 days I've been trying to run the worms out of the material in this bin over into the feeding zone that I had set up to lure them out of the finished castings and after 11 days I would have to imagine that a good number of them have already congregated over in the feeding zone I mean four days ago when we put more food in there we could already see that there was a good number of worms congregated over there so um, I figured tomorrow on the 12th day of having migrated worms I would uh, go ahead and extract the first batch of worms from there and um, and then I'm gonna need a place to put them which I could always just go for maybe my newest red wiggler bin down here which is 18 days of age at this point um, but I figured why not just set up a new bin so I've got a I've got a bin downstairs, which is um, the one right here you see listed as build pending. And if you track that back over here, the population with which I'm going to um, populate them is going to be originating from, um, you know, right here, bin number 55. So that's going to show 55 being the parent or the donor of um, worms. And the, uh, the container that I'm using is what I refer to as my cracked tall and wide old bin number two. So uh, I've got that bin down on the bench. And I've also got a whole bunch of stuff that I've been prepping for that build. Um, you know, chopping up tubes, paper towel tubes and toilet paper tubes and um, breaking apart little pieces of cardboard and all kinds of different things that I've got lined up for that. So I figured before I put that bin together... I would just come up here really quick to show you know what the purpose of it is and um, I guess usually one thing I'll try to do is I'll try to set these builds up many days prior to populating them which is typically what I do but in this case there's only going to be one day lead time so you know I've done it both ways I've had times when I built a bin let it sit and prime as I refer to it before loading the worms in but there are other times you just sort of scramble and it's sort of a last minute thing and that's okay too. Um, so let's shoot downstairs to the wormery where I've got most of that stuff already set up on the bench. And uh, we'll go ahead and we'll throw that bin together. Together. <laughs> All right. Let's head down there now. So these are the things that I've grabbed out of the freezer. It's just a whole bunch of different little tiny scraps. Stuff that I'm going to just scatter all around within the new bin as food for it. And that's the reason I usually count my build of the bin as also including the bin's first feeding. And it's a pretty generous amount. I just pulled it out of the freezer. So let's head on downstairs to the basement to include it in the build. And what you see here is the bin in which that migration of the worms is occurring. The, uh, the finished compost is beneath the paper and the feeding area is beneath the plastic. So if we work our way over onto the bench we're going to see some of the stuff that I've got set up for this over here. And it's a wide array of who knows what. Uh, what do we got here? I, uh, I'm finally going to try something new, which is to try using fabrics. So I'm going to use all, some of these old towel bits that, I, um, that I've got. And don't be surprised when I touch some of those things that just crumble apart. That, that, um, those towels have been pretty much out in the uh, UV light out in the windowsill for about 10 or more years. Probably more like 15 years so they're completely broken down by the direct sunlight getting pounded for years and years and years so uh, they're almost dust <laughs> and then there's a whole bunch of other stuff here all kinds of little pieces of cardboard whether it's toilet paper tubes and paper towel tubes or just sheets of cardboard material even the insert from a shoe which is cardboard and has the recycling symbol on it so I figured I would just throw it into the bins and I've just got a bunch of other stuff over here, including the uh, the carton of some eggs. I've got a whole box of leaves over here. And um, 
off there in the distance, I don't want to forget about some of the more important items, such as the moisture that we're going to try to add along the way while we're building this, as well as the grit that we're going to include with the feeding. So here I've got that quantity of food that we had um, portioned off that was in the bag a moment ago. So I placed it into this container here so we could more easily see it. But um, I'm going to set all this up for us to be able to assemble this bin. And it uh, shouldn't take too long, so let's get this going. Oh yeah, there was this one other uh, kind of unusual ingredient that I've got over here that I was going to include in the build of my bin, which is a couple of pine cones. Because so I've heard a couple people mention how they use pine cones in the build of their bins, or when they've fed their bins, and that the, um, the pine cones actually do pretty good in the worm bin. So I was curious about that, so I finally picked up a couple of these pine cones off the street. Um, in my mom's driveway and I figured let's give it a try. Let's try putting a couple into the worm bin. Oh yeah, and the other thing I've got is my nifty cardboard cover which is plastic coated. It's um, got some plastic wrapped around it. So this will become my plastic covering integrated into the cardboard that covers it as well. So that won't come until the end though. So we'll put that on last. And based on the amount of dry materials that I'm going to be plus putting in this um, container, I've got a feeling I might go through a little bit more than just one uh, bottle of water here. So um, I'm just taking all of these toilet paper tubes. I, I think there was something in the neighborhood of almost 20 toilet paper tubes that I chunked up into little tiny rings. To me, it seems like whether it lands this way or that way on its side or upright or whatever, they always seem to... Um, provide air you know good air pockets all over the place so I kind of like using these in the very beginning it's almost like the um, the basis for building everything else on top of it just because it seems like it guarantees a good bottom layer of little air pockets which will all collapse in time but I like the idea of there being a pretty good um, a good amount of airflow or at least air pockets for you know improved ventilation down low within the bin and right away, we're not just going to allow all that stuff to remain open. We're all going to try to backfill a little bit. So this is when I'll first take my initial small couple handfuls of leaves. Just try to use them a little bit as filler to cover up some of the holes. And you can tell it does a really nice job, but in goes a lot more dry materials by doing so. So back comes the... bottle and even though a lot of it does seem like it's just going to drip to the bottom I don't worry so much because I think that it's also going to try to evaporate up from there and it's going to get caught up in the all of the upper layers as that happens so I think this is just going to allow it to um, become a good sort of a damp base uh, basis for the rest that comes to follow and so there's really no rules to any of this. It's whatever you got, just throw it in there, make sure it's nice and damp. But it was um, after this initial layer that I thought I would go right for the, um, the fabric layer of laying in this um, basically cotton terry cloth beach towel material. And um, I think like I mentioned earlier, you can see a lot of it has just been tattered, tattered completely by the sun. And I did, you know, cut it with the scissors, but I could have just as easily torn it <laughs> into little tiny shreds too. Because the stuff is completely trashed by the sun. It's incredible, the power of the sun. So, um, you know, some are more deteriorated than others, but they're all pretty far gone. And I've been talking about doing this for so long now. Every time I see um, other worm channels using t-shirts and other pieces of fabric, um, to cover up their material or to even feed their bins and whatnot. I'm always thinking to myself, you know, I got those two old beach towels I pulled out of that windowsill all those months ago. That would be such um, a good thing to try in the worm bin since it is all cotton. It's all, you know, uh, material that the worms should be able to consume. Why not give it to them? So um, now I've got another pretty good solid foundation to start putting things on. I thought that the food could happen pretty soon um, on top of this stuff so that even if the worms consider this to be kind of a boring material that maybe some of the food that um, I'm giving them could you know release some of its moisture down into the um, down into the towel the beach towels 
So um, I figured I'd put the food on top of the beach towels, but in between the food and the beach towel, I wanted to create a couple little additional cardboard layers as sort of a, uh, a foundation for the food that we're placing in here. I've got a number of objects that can be used for this. Let's try to use them all, right? I've got this um, shoe thing. I've got bits and pieces of cardboard. Even uh, I was even kind of trying to use these. I was going to use these together at some point, so here it goes. We're putting them both in together. And um, now I feel like I've got some good little pockets to place all of the um, food into. But once again, we've got towels here. We've got car dry cardboard. All stuff that um, is going in almost completely dry. And definitely got to get some moisture in here before we keep adding more stuff. And all these frozen veggies that we're putting in here, that's all going to release moisture too. But if we can get a whole bunch of uh, water in here, maybe even to the point where it's pulled up in these cardboard containers, then... Um, and it can only help, right? Maybe even try to get some moisture down onto the towel underneath. Ooh, we're almost at the end of number one. I'm wondering if I could just even, you know, since it is a towel right below, it should not allow for the moisture to just go right through it. It should be capturing it all the while. It's funny because I got it quite a bit out after I took the squirt nozzle off. It's just, I guess the squirt nozzle doesn't get it all from the bottom. I don't like pouring water directly. Usually I like to sort of get it in there gradually, but I figured since we've got pretty much a layer of towel down there, it's the perfect substance that's gonna definitely capture any water that tries to um, pass by it. So in this case, I didn't feel so bad uh, almost directly pouring water down into the bin, but I think we did achieve our goal of getting these little pockets of water in here too, which will also gradually time release down into the towel. So, all right, I like the way things are looking here. I believe there's no real reason to wait any further. Let's, uh, let's start loading up all these little pockets with food. Hopefully it'll become sort of a place where the worms want to come up to take part in the food. And then uh, stick around to continue uh, chewing away at the cardboard right below it. Especially after it's had a chance to absorb some of the yummy food that's um, been sitting on top of it for how long. And if you're a worm farmer like me, you know what to do next. It's always a good idea to get your food prepped with some grit right there on top of it. It's going to help the worms eat that food. And with this being a brand new bin, there's no grit anywhere else in this place except what I'm putting in now so I'll be pretty generous in the beginning and in some of the earlier feedings I don't even have that much left in here so we might as well just tap it all out and place all of it down here into the bin it doesn't even matter if some of it gets down onto the towel they'll need grit to eat that too I'm sure all right I have to make myself some milk more crushed eggshell <laughs> and you know at this layer where all the food is maybe that is the proper place because I don't know for sure because it's my first time composting pine cones but let's try to place them right in there at the same level as the food right nestled in between all of it hopefully getting some action and some traffic which um, I've gotten the impression that, you know, worms like these things, so I guess we'll see how they how they go. Oh yeah, this too. You might have saw this earlier, but I didn't explain it. I was um, trying to prep crushed leaves, because when they come from my uh, outdoor supply, they look like this, with the stems and all, but I wanted to have a nice fine collection of just leafy matter only, no stems. So I actually did pick through a good, good amount of it, and I... Um, I wanted to have some good fine stuff that I could use in my time-lapse container because, yeah, I've been building my time-lapse. My next one is almost set to go with uh, the introduction of worms. So let's get all these little sticks of leaves into play too. 
All right, another thing we need more of is water. So I grabbed a little bit more, refilled the uh, squirt bottle. So there's, um, there's another thing that I often use. I don't think I displayed it earlier. It's coffee filters. There's always coffee filters piling up. And they're a good additional source of bedding and carbon to use in the worm bins. So let's throw some of this in here too. Very nice. Good little top layer of additional carbon right on top of the food source. Let's give this some water too. I believe that will do. Now I've still got a few other things remaining here, but not much. There's the little chunks of cardboard, which we could use next, I suppose. We'll use those as sort of filler. <laughs> Kind of fill in some of these gaps and holes around the food area. There's not much of it. It's just little sc scraps, little few pieces of cardboard that I had laying around that I figured I would just shred up into small pieces so we could scatter them about inside of this bin. So now we've got almost a nice flat layer again, but we can definitely level it off, level it off nicely if we just use a little bit more leafy matter scattered out here across the top and after this I don't think I've got much of anything else just looking around here I've got a uh, yeah you know I've got this piece of newspaper here that the, the chopped up and broken up pieces of towel were resting on top of so a lot of times I'll have sort of a top covering piece of paper and this is a, a perfect fit for that here I think we can go with a little bit more leafy material across the top. This is almost, I would say, more than half air. <laughs> and I think a lot of this is just stuff stacked up on top of each other with a bunch of air gaps in between all of it. So let's see if we can get a little bit more moisture down into here. comes as a great opportunity to just rinse off the side, get all those little leaf particles down into the bin so the worms can eat them up. And here too, if a lot of this water that I'm spraying in right now doesn't stay on the dry materials and get soaked in, if it all just somehow manages to roll down low into the bottom of the bin, I somehow have this feeling that there's not going to be any accumulated water down there, not with all this dry stuff hovering right above it. I think that stuff's going to just eventually evaporate and get caught up in all of the um, dry materials above it. Um, or at least that's what I'm hoping. That's the reason I'm gonna be covering up with plastic at the end. And the end is here. That's all it's gonna take. We're gonna put this on here as just a partial vapor barrier. It'll be able to pick up some moisture. No, better idea. Let's, uh, let's soak it with some moisture ahead of time so it doesn't become a draw for moisture, maybe instead it'll just become a, a source for moisture if we soak it good. If tomorrow when we open the thing up and it seems like it's still kind of dry, we can always add a little bit more. But at least we're started. So I'm gonna go ahead back up to my spreadsheet and mark this off as built and ready, but it's only gonna get one day of aging because I believe that tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and get the inhabitants in here and uh, get this bin started. All right, everyone. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. That's always really appreciated. And uh, also consider subscribing to the channel too. That's really appreciated as well. All right, have a great day. Thanks everyone.